Talk to me then about this sub-variant you're detecting in the wastewater in and around southwestern Johannesburg. Yes, so this may be similarly linked to what we're currently seeing. So the wastewater is certainly very critical as an, as an early indicator or warning of, um, of transmission in communities. Um, but I think it's probably closely linked to what we're also doing with regard to um, sequencing cases um, that are at our hospitals. In other words, there's a national um, network of genomic laboratories that are looking at variants um, that, are, that do arise. And what we have noticed is that Omicron 2 uh, was the initial variant that was fairly dominant over the last month or two. Um, but this is uh, subsequently, I think, going to be overtaken by a, two sub-lineages, um, so-called BA4 um, and BA5, for example. And these, again, are thought to be more highly transmissible and immune evasive, similar to what we've seen previously with uh, the, the first variant, BA1, um, as such. So I think that's what we probably are going to see. And if these lineages, sub-lineages, uh, are similar in their behavior, then I think we will see that uncoupling again. So we'll cer certainly see a trend in, in large numbers of cases, but we hope that the immune responses are such that it will protect against um, severe uh, disease. So although detectable, is it transmissible via wastewater? No, not at all. So what we're detecting is really fragments of the, the virus itself. It's genetic material um, that, is, that is in circulation. So we're not detecting viable viruses. That we're detecting the, the fragments of that particular virus in wastewater. All right. You say BA4 and BA5. What does that mean uh, for the lay person? <laughs> you know, because our concern will be, is this thing deadlier than before? Is it more transmissible than before? What does that mean for us as lay people? Yeah, so it's, it's almost as if you're looking at um, a group of zebras in a field, in other words, and you're just looking at the patterns. And certainly what, what we look, when we look at the patterns, we're looking at um, the changes in what effect this will have in terms of the amino acids that are being expressed in the proteins and what that means. And so there are subtle changes or variations within these variants, BA4 and BA5, that lead us to think that that may be um, immune evasive. And in fact, um, a recent publication coming out from South Africa looking at a small group of individuals certainly shows that there's a decline um, in immune response as a result of those particular uh, mutations. But I think what was critical really around uh, these changes is that if you're not vaccinated, the extent of immune drop or loss or evasion is far greater um, than if you were vaccinated. So again, I think the, the major I think message that I would like to the, the listeners to take away from this is that you should be getting your, your vaccine if you've not been vaccinated or get fully vaccinated. And if you're fully vaccinated, to have a, if you have the opportunity to get your boosters, to get your booster, because those are the steps, one of the major steps, in fact, yeah. to prevent you from getting um, severe disease. Because there's been this understanding that, you know, uh, but hang on, uh, the information that is now clear is that uh, more than 80% of us have had some exposure to this thing, either through vaccinations or uh, through uh, having had it. Um, does previous exposure protect you as much as the vaccine? No, so we're still seeing uh, reinfection. So there's probably, you know, waning immunity as well that, that contributes to that, but also uh, reinfections as well. So we are seeing the proportion. I have not seen the official statistics and the extent of that, but we certainly are seeing, seeing reinfections as well. So sure, sure. sure. Hands, hands. So hold yeah, on. No, no, what I mean is, is in other words, I would assume your answer is going to be get your booster shot, get vaccination. It's not enough to make the argument that, but I've been previously exposed, so I'm going to be okay. Yeah, absolutely. So even if you've been previously exposed, um, the likelihood is that you may well have a reinfection. And in fact, sometimes you can have even a, a worse um, scenario in terms of your symptoms experience as well. Hence, um, I think it's really important that although you, you may have had a previous exposure, it does give you some level of immunity, but the optimum immunity is really a combination of your either previous exposure plus vaccines or getting a full um, series of, of vaccinations. With the billions, I mean, billions and billions of shots that have, had been, that have already been administered around the world, how do you explain that there's still a relatively low take-up uh, on vaccinations here in South Africa and even booster shots now? Yes, it, it's very difficult. I think we will have to try, and, and I think we are trying to address that 
and through different strategies, as I'm sure you've seen, trying to attract people to um, vaccinate. So it's really, again, reiterating messages around hesitancy, um, and that's a, a fairly large proportion of people as well, trying to reassure them that, in fact, this is not a, a flu. It's, it's just more, it is more serious than influenza, although the influenza is serious, and try and manage those particular aspects. But I think, I think it's the, the, the strategies either are not successful or we need to reapproach it and see how we can incentivize people to actually uh, be, be vaccinated. All right, Professor Adrian. All right, thank you very much for your time, Professor Adrian Piren, Executive Director at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. And I think that's the message, right? Even if you've had previous exposure, even if you suspect, you think, you don't know for sure, you know for sure, still get vaccinated. Previous exposure is not as good as the vaccines. Current events, developing stories, tough questions, your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.